the session. Hmm. Ada opsi rename kalau yeah. teman-teman bisa nemuin. Mm-hmm. Let's see a couple of what we've got. I mean, we've got one person over here who is a panda and also a ninja. We've got a ninja ra. Let's go Ada through the list a little bit. Yeah. Let's so see if I mean, we've got one person over here who is a panda and also a ninja. We've got a ninja ra. Uh, Uh, Mine, could you turn off your microphone because we're getting feedback from the live stream? That's okay. I'm going to. Thank you. So let's find out who has changed the the name on here. Oh, we're getting a lot of people who are just their name I'm at this point. Right. While we wait for people to change their names, shall we begin the session? Yeah, uh, I also yeah. think that I uh, we're live on YouTube. Should we welcome them? Oh, we should say hello to the people. Yeah, we're live. Hello, people of the internet. Welcome, Hi everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, yang ada di YouTube juga. Um, we're going to start the session and then the delivery of the topic soon. Dan teman-teman sekalian bisa langsung tanya di uh, uh, chat Zoom atau juga di chat uh, YouTube. So feel free to ask in English or in Indonesia. Don't be afraid uh, if it's uh, grammatically uh, still incorrect. Uh, not going to be judged here. Not going to be... Gak akan dinilai ya teman-teman di sini ya. Jadi uh, feel free and feel safe to speak English. Um, dan kalau misalnya ada yang uh, kurang uh, mengerti juga, itu nggak apa-apa. Bisa langsung ditanyain di kolom chatnya. Oke? Okay? Oke, okay, so now we're going to go to Jamie again to present the matter for today. Just before we do so, uh, I'm looking at the chat right now and we're having mm-hmm. issues with people renaming them. If uh, Could you check on the security tab that participants are able to... I will. I I think uh, Ruth might have unable that she did mention in the beginning. Ah, uh, okay. You guys should be able to now rename yourselves. Please do not put anything inappropriate on there, or otherwise we will have to change it. But yeah, uh, you can now rename yourself um, to the celebrity that you think you look the most like. Who will it be? I already uh, changed the permission. So everyone, change your display yes. name. Okay, very good. And while you're doing that, we'll begin the, the show. So guys, this is uh, an introduce, introduction to the basics of async job interviews in English. As Inter, um, uh, said earlier, um, this will primarily be in English, but if you want to answer in Indonesian, that is perfectly fine. Also to people in the YouTube, please uh, follow along. We, will be, we have people in the chat right now who are going to be um, sending them the messages to us. And so any questions you have, we should be able to respond to them in the not too distant future. So async job interviews, or as I like to call it, how to, la- uh, how to learn to stop worrying about all the grammar. We don't really care about grammar here. If you make a mistake, that's okay. So the first sk- uh, skill of job interviews is to introduce yourself. So that's what we're going to actually start practicing now. Um, in a couple of moments, we're going to put all the participants in the Zoom session into a breakout room. In this breakout room, you're going to be invisible to the rest of us. You're not going to be visible to the internet. So you're going to have a chance to get to know each other. I'm going to ask you guys to introduce yourselves to each other, tell each other your names. I also want you to come up with a group name. Uh, this is going to be your team name. By the way, there are going to be points awarded to the team with the most creative name. So please play around upon it. I also want you to decide on one person to be the group leader, and they are going to be ask, answering questions later on. First question I'm going to ask you guys is to explain to each other why English is difficult to learn or difficult to use for you. At which point, uh, Intan, if you don't mind, could you send everybody into the different breakout rooms? This way, I'm going to send, yeah? Uh, yeah. Yep. I'm yep. still so, trying to... Mm-hmm. 
Ninja, so, can what... we send it to the their breakout room? Mm -hmm. Wait. Ah, uh, the fun of the internet. We did yeah. try to placate the internet gods earlier on in this session, but obviously we weren't very effective at it. But we will find out shortly. Okay, teman-teman, boleh tunggu sebentar ya. I like the fact that we've got not Steve you, we've got Garfield the cat. Uh, <laughs> not Hermione Granger. Ooh, I think I know what team name they're going to come up with. Okay, wait, it's too long. That's a, I don't know that celebrity, but that's fine. Not O Sahan. Ooh, that's a nice picture. Hello. Welcome to the stream. And slowly but surely, we're getting people going in. Again, you should be able to change your name in the chat so you can get to know each other. And slowly but surely, people are going into the chat. We'll wait until everybody's in, and then we can continue a little bit more with this. Yes, the breakout room is ready. Teman-teman uh, sekalian bisa join ya ke breakout room yang sudah di decide. So there should be a button that you can press to just send people automatically in um, as well. We should be able to get that there. And not Steve Yu is going into a breakout room at this point. Ah, we've got somebody who's got a similar name. Uh, I will join the breakout room later myself. So we got not Vin Diesel has joined a breakout room. And we've got a ninja went about. What? So at which point? What? Right. Uh, while we are waiting for people to go into the breakout room and start, let's uh, people people who are watching on YouTube come a bit closer. Come in. Have a little bit of a listen right now. We're going to have a little bit of a talk while people are in the breakout room. Ninja Febby, I need you to go. I Bye. haven't found a breakout room. Oh, button. okay. There should be an, an automatic one yes. there to plonk you through. Slowly but shortly, we're getting people going through. We'll find out okay. when they do. Because I have to keep this information secret because it's only for the YouTube channel. as we go through. There should be a button on the top of the screen to join it. Hmm. We're getting a lot of people who are having issues joining the breakout room. While we wait for that, we'll continue on. Everybody should be in, in breakout room. Right. Well, we'll we'll continue with that uh, as if it's a little bit of a thing. Ninja Febby, are you're not able to click the button, are you? Or you don't have a button? I'm waiting. Usually, it's automatic, right? Yeah, yeah. it should be automatic. So yeah. we'll see. I don't know why it hasn't shown. Okay. There yeah, go. got it. I I think it's happening. Just. Uh... There we go. We're slowly but surely getting people through there. I think this is an indication of what we're going to be talking about in the future, about the nature of online learning and what uh, are the problems with it, how it is, what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages. So while we wait for it, let's mm -hmm. see if we can send people in directly. Or indeed, we can put them into the waiting room and we'll continue from there. Ah, the fun of the internet. So you're joining a breakout room, Jamie, I believe. Any moment now. Great. Nine. Are you nine? We will find out. 
Yes, we've got about nine people. They're going to be privy to the secret information as well. So we'll we'll leave them in for this point and we'll let them hopefully to get to know each other and uh, work out. So why are we doing this? Um, well, we are looking into what is the objective of a class? This is something that a lot of big companies misunderstand. A lot of big companies will try and give you information. They will try and teach at you. But actually, that's not the most effective way for people to learn. The most effective way for people to learn is to do it themselves. The problem with a lot of uh, webinars and with a lot, uh, lot of talks is it's the teacher talking at them. What you yeah. want is for people to practice. And in order to let people feel comfortable to practice, they need to feel safe. And so part of pe putting people into a breakout room is to make them feel safe, mm -hmm. make them feel like they're not going to be uh, attacked by the teacher or forced to ask questions. Because teachers are quite scary for most people. Yeah. It's scary to be asked by someone. So Jamie, like we've been doing teaching for me, myself, I've been doing this for 18 years and you've been doing this for relatively what, six, eight years now? Yeah, almost seven years now. Yeah. And uh, we started CCT, which is corporate community training for a reason. And uh, yeah. for those of you watching us on YouTube, uh, our logo is there and that's what it says, corporate community yeah. training. So this is the first time, Jamie, we're doing a class online with a huge number of people. Um, mm. What are your thoughts about this as a, as a teacher? As a teacher, um, this is something that maybe we shouldn't be saying while everybody's around, but the name of this channel is Batshot, so I feel we should do a little bit of gossiping. Yeah, let's about, do justice. And, yeah, let's do justice to the name. I, I would say it is not the most effective way to learn. The most effective way for people to learn is to be actively engaged with what they're learning, to be supported by somebody who understands the subject and can tell them when they're doing something wrong or when they're doing something right, and the opportunity to practice. It is, the, uh, it is those three kind of steps that is the thing that leads to real learning. Yeah. Knowledge, information is useful only as far as you can use it. And so the problem with a large event like this, and like many large webinars, is that it doesn't give students a chance to practice. And this is why we've put people into a breakout room. It's to give them a chance to actually practice the skills they're going to be using in a job interview, right. i.e. talking about themselves, introducing themselves to someone who is new, who might look a little bit scary, mm -hmm. uh, and to do it in a difficult and uh, dangerous environment. Now, if I asked everybody to introduce themselves when there's a hundred other people in the room, that would be very scary. If I asked them to do it with a hundred people in the room and potentially hundreds, maybe even thousands of people on the internet also watching, that's really scary. What is absolutely terrifying is to be asked by a hundred in front of a hundred people with thousands of people watching and the teacher throwing questions at you in the moment. So would it be fair to say what you're saying is the reason why we have decided that we are going to put people into breakout rooms um, using the Zoom platform is so that to keep the group smaller and so that yes. there would be an interaction. And when there's an interaction, there's, a, there's learning happening. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly it. Uh, interaction using the skills that you're going to be using outside in the world in a safe environment is essential for learning. Absolutely. And so when we have big uh, webinars like this, it's vital that we get people practicing while they're doing it, not just listening, not just having information going in one ear, out the other. They need to practice the skills that they are learning. And that is what we do at CCT. We give you the opportunity to practice. Yeah. So uh, at CCT, what we focus on is um, keeping the group small. And, uh, and the reason why we do that is because due to effectiveness, like what you said, learning happens when the group is smaller. The larger the group, the more, uh, the more challenging it is to get the messages across and to keep people paying attention to mm -hmm. what is it that's being taught or what is it that's being communicated. Um, so like for me personally, like this, is, this event with HRD, Bachelor, like it's very interesting and also um, new because we're doing this yes. with uh, a lot of people, like 
we have 100 people on Zoom right now and we have another uh, couple of thousands on YouTube. Uh, so to keep, to keep things engaging and to keep things uh, interesting, we have decided to do, to do it quite differently this time around. Because of course, we are, we are CCT and we like to make sure that everybody is interacting, everybody's engaging and everybody's getting something out of this. Absolutely. So, yeah, so this is this this is actually very exciting, and uh, I'm really excited to see what they discuss in the breakout room. And once they're done, what are we going to get to hear from them? Like, what was the experience like? Yeah, hopefully people had an opportunity to talk. Uh, of course, this is a new experiment, which is why it's, ex it's exciting. And we'll see how it works. We're obviously having a little bit of an interesting time with the handover and that stuff. And this is part of developing a new procedure is that it's uh, always requires a little bit of uh, breathing room to let people actually do it. At which point, uh, uh, Minigot, um, Secret name. I'm not sure which celebrity that is. Uh, oh, I'm not seeing. Not Gigi Hadi. And that's a hi, not Gigi Hadi. Min Mincott is Ruth. Uh, yes. So, hi, Ruth. Would it be possible if we could start bringing people back? And we're going to see what people have been talking about in their breakout rooms. And while we do so, we'll wait to see uh, what they've been saying. But yeah, this is an important thing that is missing from a lot of webinars, the chance to actually actively use the things you're learning. Yeah, and I think uh, what would be the, I mean, like if, I, if we were to outline the advantages and disadvantages of online learning mm -hmm. is, um, especially with online learning, I personally think, Jamie, that we need to keep it concise. We need to, by concise, I mean, we need to keep the group even like smaller, maximum mm -hmm. 20 for learning to happen. So if there's out there, like if there are people out there who are looking into teaching or wanting to train, then this could be yeah. a very valuable insight for you because I've been a teacher for 18 years and Jamie six, and we have learned that through the process that uh, keeping keeping things small, it equals keeping things safe. Because the larger, I mean, think about, just think about us, right, Jamie? Like if we're, if we're, um, if we're amidst a huge crowd, there's, an, there's this feeling of intimidation. But if the crowd is smaller, then the intimidation tends to either not be there or subsides. Again, that whole thing about uh, safety. Mm -hmm. And speaking of which, we hope that uh, the people who've been in the breakout rooms, we hope that you've had a chance to get to know each other. Um, hello, not Robbie Downey Jr. Hello, not Angelina Jolie, not Brad Pitt. I'm not sure. I think you might be Brad Pitt. Hello. <laughs> I think they're trying to keep a low profile. Oh, uh, well. They stay oh, true to, to their Asian-ness. Oh, that's, it, it's, it's lovely. Thank you very much. Um, oh, I like this name. I'm going to go with Ninja oh, or, Bubbles. Or rather, they're walking in your footsteps because you uh, you've changed your name to not Chris Pat. Chris yes. Pat. Yeah. Which, uh, just to give you a, a hint to the people who are in the YouTube, we were having this vote beforehand, and I was sure I was going to end up as Ed Sheeran <laughs> because everybody in my works tells me I look like Ed Sheeran. <laughs> and I, I prefer to think I'm Chris Pratt, but hey. So, um, oh, I like this name, Ninja Bubbles. Uh, hi, Ninja Bubbles. Are you able to unmute your mic? Let's see. I am. Hello, hey. Jamie. Hey. Hello. Hey. Hello. I'm not supposed to tell the people in YouTube that I'm Jamie. I'm not Chris Pratt. <laughs> okay. Um, hello, not Chris Pratt. Thank you. I, I appreciate the, the help for there. So uh, would you mind uh, telling me what your group name is? OK. Uh, we were still getting to know each other. So oh, no. we were about to. Yes, I'm sorry. But okay. I, I, I think I hope my group doesn't kill me for this. I'm going to call us the Swifties. The Swifties. Swifties. And OK. The like Swifties. That. And they will know why. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. And um, uh, so I am just for being the brave one to be the first one to talk. I'm going to give you seven points for <gasps> groups. If Yay! anybody else is looking for any points uh, for their team, yes, there are points going out. Please use the reaction button to raise your hand and I'll see if I can get to you. And in the meantime, I'll keep a view on the on this and hopefully we'll get to do that. 
while I've got you, uh, Ninja Bubbles, would you mind telling me, did you guys have a chance to talk about the difficulties of learning English? We did, yeah. We had a pretty insightful conversation about that. Oh, nice. So, would you mind mm -hmm. telling us a little bit about that? Well, we talked about a few different reasons. Um, uh, there is confidence, not having a chance to practice, uh, worrying about grammar, all extremely valid concerns. And uh, we also talked about community pressure to uh, pressure to be perfect or professional, uh, proficient speakers rather, like we're not getting the right support from the community around us when we're learning and being teased for making mistakes. That's, so, that's a really yeah. good point. I really like that. It point. is. It is. It is. It was a point that I I found very unfortunate, but also very insightful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a lot of the fear around it is, as you say, it's being made fun of. It's kind of putting yourself out there Absolutely. and people going uh, at you in the group. And that's a really scary thing. Absolutely. Secret host. Yes. We were talking about that before to the YouTube mm -hmm. audience. By the way, oh. uh, Rifki, I love the fact that you are defending Indonesia from a fighter jet while we're in this Zoom thing. Godspeed to you. Continue defending the nation. Uh, that's a, at, at which point I'm going to bring it on. Ooh, I don't know. Not Robert Downey Jr. I don't believe you. I think you are Robert Downey Jr. I, is your mic working? Would you be able to tell us about your group? Let's see if we're able to get him or not. Hello. Maybe you could uh, re tell us your group name in the chat. Oh, no worries. Could you tell us your group name, please? Hello. Hello. Oh, great. We could get you. Now I can unmute my mic. Uh, hello. Not please. <laughs> yeah. I, my, I, my group name is Speak From Home. Speak From Home. Oh, nice. Yeah. I like it. Um, it's a bit less esoteric than Swifties, so I'm going to give you seven points for that, for your team. You. And would you mind, uh, did you guys have a chance to talk about the difficulties in learning English or using English? Uh, so our group have uh, discussed several reasons, and maybe those reasons are a bit similar with the Swifties reasons. Mm -hmm. So for number one is, uh, actually, our group uh, mostly consists of Indonesians, so our environment doesn't really encourage us to speak English in everyday practice. And yes. the second is uh, about confidence too, because maybe some of our friends are a bit judgmental when we are using English not properly, and some of them can be a cruel uh, yeah. grammar Nazi. So it will <laughs> disrupt our confidence to speak English. Absolutely. That's a good point. And I like the, what you were saying there about uh, being in an environment that doesn't let you practice. Um, because I would say, I mean, as a teacher, when I was uh, teaching um, students the English about going abroad, I would always tell them, look, OK, we're going to get you to a certain point. But the point that you're really going to take off in your English is when you drop down in the plane and you're in that English speaking environment. We can take you so far, but, after, but once we get you there, you are the ones who's going to do it. So that's a really good point. Um, so I'll, I'm going to give an extra two points to you because I really like that point to your team. Oh, I, I'm, there's a lot of ninjas around. Also not Hermione Granger. Hello, uh, that's, again, I don't believe you. You look like uh, you should be in Hogwarts. Um, I think I'm going to pick on Ninja Essie uh, for this one. Hello, Ninja Essie. Hello. Hello, Hello, not Chris Pratt. How are, you, uh, how are you doing? Would you mind telling me what your group name is? Well, one of my like friends told me that the Mandalorian is a great name for our group name. So okay. I chose the Mandalorian. This is the way. No, wait a second. This is Wakanda. I got that wrong. There. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so for the Mandalorians, did you guys get a chance to discuss why it's difficult to learn English? Yeah, we had an interesting discussion that some of them actually were talking about, like, not Robert Downey Jr. I don't know his real name, <laughs> but he was saying about judgment, uh, being judgmental. It's actually 
one one part of our discussion like they sometimes like people in here sometimes uh pick up on us if we talk english properly because it's just like just talk properly like indonesian don't like talk right. Yeah, like you have an American accent. Don't like talk like you have a, a British accent. Just talk like Indonesian. Mm. But we are learning. It's just <laughs> yeah, we're talking yeah. Like being judgmental like that. So you're you're being judged from both ends. If your English is bad, you're going to be judged. If your English yeah. is good, you're going to be judged. That's there's that <laughs> happy middle point where there's no judgment in between, where you're just good enough, but no. <laughs> no <right? laughs> Okay, so guys. it's confusing, right? Yeah. Uh, Jamie, uh, we have a question, I think, from the YouTube. Uh, oh, okay. So, so the question says, how to increase our confidence if we get job interview with English conversation, but we could not, but we do not have enough vocab and grammar. So this, his name is Faisal from Central Java. Hello, Faisal. Uh, thank you for answering. Uh, it's a good question, and I am going to give the YouTube comment section six points uh, for having a question. Let's see who can win at the end of it. I am totally keeping account of this. Um, basically, I would say the, the answer is practice. Um, there are a number of techniques that we could give you to help you support the stuff. Practice, watch movies, watch TV, watch YouTube. Um, uh, find somebody or find a bunch of friends who are safe, who you can practice the skills with. If you if that interview is tomorrow, try your best. Don't worry about the grammar. If your that interview is coming up in three months' time, join a community. Practice talking back and forth. Mm. Conversation is a skill. You learn skills by practicing. Um, and so, I'd love to hear more about your example. Please put it into the comments, or maybe you can uh, message us directly at our CCT Indonesia Instagram account, and we can go more in depth into your issue. But basically, practice talking. Um, that is the only solution. That's the only way to learn, is to practice, practice, practice. Don't worry about making mistakes, and uh, try and have a little bit of fun. Because I like to tell everybody, English is crazy. It makes no sense whatsoever. If you understand the grammar about it, it's inconsistent. You try If you try to apply logic, you're going to be wrong about 60% of the time. So if you make a mistake, that's not your fault. That's English's fault. And I, if you take nothing else from this session, remember that. Um, but please do add more information in the YouTube comments. We'll try and respond to it as we go on. Um, at which point, um, uh, Manajo, Ruth, intern, we'll go on to the next session. Uh, slide. Section of here, a slide, sorry. I want to hear a little bit from the people in the Zoom uh, uh, session. Um, I'm going to ask a bunch of questions. We're going to have a poll. I want to see from the poll which one that you guys uh, decide. We're starting to think now less from our perspective, and now we need to think from the boss's perspective. So from the boss's perspective, which is more important, you or the job? Could we have the poll coming up uh, right now, um, and could we get everybody to answer. We've got the exit. We should probably cover up uh, what I wrote in there. <laughs> I agree. OK, all right. We're getting a lot of responses on that side. I can't think why. Let's find out what we get from here. Oh, I'm awesome is catching up. The boss is a ha hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. Oh, this is very, this is getting even. Yeah. But, but I think the, the boss is uh, blah coming up. Uh, uh, we could, when we get to 70, we'll close the vote, see who else comes in. Oh, it's very close. We just need four more votes. Let's get those four votes in. We just need three votes. Can I am awesome come out ahead? Oh, it's catching up. It's catching up. Last one. Oh, it's a 50. Oh, no. We're, I'm going to call it on the job because the boss is in it. Okay, let's end the poll there. Um, that will be our takeaway. Um, 
let's share the results uh, there. I am awesome breaks into the lead. You guys are awesome. You are all awesome, wonderful people. However, uh, I would say if we were to answer the question here, we need to go beyond just answering that question. We need to answer why. So no matter which answer you went for, can I ask you guys to put into the chat why you think you are more important or why you think the job is more important from the boss's perspective? We'll let you guys have a little um, moment to do it. I'm going to go through the different videos and find the best name. Not uh, Kendall Jenner. Oh, I think, uh, please put five points for your team. That's a good name. Tiffany's iPad. I don't know. Are you talking about like breakfast at Tiffany, Tiffany? Or are you not Zach Malik? Ooh. We'll see what people are putting into the comments in a moment. So in the comments or in the chat, could you explain why you think you or the job is more important? We'll give people, I'm going to continue. Not Miley Kunis. Absolutely. Gal Gadot. We've actually got Gal Gadot here. Not Scarlett Johansson. Okay. We're getting a couple of comments here. I like this. Please add more. Um, Ricky, that's a really good answer. Could I ask you to put it into the, the non-private chat, please? Garfield, the cat. It's a, it's a really good answer, and I am basically going to use it. Hello, Garfield the cat. Hello, not Steve Yu. Not Oha Yu. I don't know who that is. I should look like not English native. Hello, not Sian. Taylor Swift. We've actually got Taylor Swift in. Oh, so many people. Right, let's go to the beginning of this. Let's have a look at this. Okay, uh, we're getting a lot of the job is replaceable, but I'm not. I like that, Angelina Jolie. You are indeed not replaceable. From my perspective, from your perspective, from everybody in here, we would not want to replace you, Angelina Jolie. But I think, uh, I, I mean, I like this, uh, your response, Dan not Daniel Radcliffe. But again, I'm going to bring it up to uh, Mr. Rifkis here. From the boss's perspective, the job is more important because every worker could be re replaced, but not the job. And this, I'm afraid, is the reality of the situation. We always need to focus on the job more than we focus on ourselves when we're in a job interview. Because the, while you are important to fill the role, if somebody else can fill the role, the job goes to them. You can be changed, but the job can't. If they need the job done, they don't care who does it. They only care that it is done. Uh, we're getting a couple more things, but again, I agree, not Angelina Jolie, you are essential, and I would be sad if you disappeared. <laughs> I like Beyonce's song, Irreplaceable. Okay, we might be getting a little bit off topic. Let's move on to the next one. So, yeah, we need to, we need to be aware that the boss is a D at hashtag CK, and the job is more important for them. Next question, could we have the next poll? Experience or qualification, which is more important? Also, Mochi is joined. Do you wanna go Mochi? Hello Mochi. Let's get some comments in there. Ooh, experience is coming out, but qualification. Yeah, it's coming in. Again, once we get to 70, I'm going to close the, the votes. Oh, experience is definitely in the lead. Absolutely. Okay, let's call it, we're going to call it on experience. Good job, people. Let's share the results. Um, I'm going to stop sharing from this end. Okay, guys, similar procedure. Could you put into the chat why you think experience is more important than qualification? We'll come back to you in a moment. Oh, not all young. Uh, the job is more important but than employees because everybody can be replaced. It's horrible, but it's true. 
So let's move back to experience or qualifications. Why experience or why qualifications? We'll let people go through that. Ooh, good, good wording, Gal Gadot. Experience is proof that you're qualified. <laughs> Emel has written because, which I think is a experience of proof of your ability, your skills, your knowledge, indeed. Yes, I like this. Uh, Mocha Manda, I'm sorry, I'm sure I'm replaced. With experience, all our proof for a job is real. Um, yeah, experience if, is real. Qualifications in the end is just a bit of paper. Yeah. Good for the YouTube chat comments. Four points to the YouTube chat comments. Uh, I'm going to give four points to every team on this side because, again, yes, you guys are coming up with the right answer there. We need to focus on our experience with it. How our experience meets the job. What we've done that is similar to the job. What we've done, what specific real events are similar to events that we're going to do in the job. Ninja uh, Bubbles says that she loves the name Garfield the Cat. Thank you for that input. I appreciate it. Uh, this is a good point, Pandu. Uh, uh, sorry, Panda, Ninja Panda. In most cases, I think it is skill, unless you are applying for a job in an academic field. Not can, uh, Kendall Jenner. This is a good point, and this is a really difficult situation for a lot of you guys. If you're a fresh graduate, you don't have work experience. And the thing that you need to do here is to start saying how the experience that you gained at university is similar to the work that you're going to do uh, there. And this is what we're in the future going to be building on, is how to link experiences that are outside of work to your work job. If you were a part of a club at a uh, university, that is good experience for when you are part of a team at work and you can start to link the two together. Experience will imagine what you like and match you with your future job. Interesting point. Yeah, again, experience is real. These are all good points. I think we'll move on to the next section, which is, okay, now we're gonna start looking at when the boss asks you a question, should you answer in a general way or should you answer with specifics? Oh, no, let's, let's uh, set the poll going. We'll pretend that didn't happen. I completely messed up there, Never mind. Uh, could we set the next poll, please? General answers or specific answers? Should you answer in general? Oh, I work very hard every day or I worked hard yesterday. Okay, this is this is clear. You guys have got the thing down. We're 90% specific. 89, 90. Could tell people tell me what people are saying in the chat on YouTube? Oh, this is a uh, I'm before we even finish the poll, I want to bring in Scarlett Johansson here. Um, she's written specifics. My boss always asks for specifics since he wants real data. And I think, frankly, we don't even have to ask why now, because that is the perfect answer to that. Uh, not Scarlett Johansson. What's your team name? Good to know that they chose mostly specific. Uh, if Scarlett, not Scarlett Johansson, could tell me the team name in the chat, we'll go with there. Let's end the poll and share results. There we go. We'll find out later because your team is going to get points. Yeah, absolutely. Specifics. Why specifics? Because specifics are real. You always want to answer with, a, a, give a real actual event when you're answering. Um, we're going to come into this later, but basically keep in your head the question, when? When did this happen? Because that's the thing that is going to help you. Uh, Ninja you specific answers value more because our company needs statistics as their strategic management. Again, this is a, a, yeah, this is a really good point because when you are applying for a job, you need to think like the boss. <laughs> 
I like that answer. Not Daniel Radcliffe, because specific doctors are more, more expensive than general doctors. Good answer. You guys want money. If you're specific, you get more money. Your team name is not Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> That's a really confusing team name, but four points to not Robert Downey Jr. there. Right, let's go on to the next question. Which is more important from the boss's perspective? I'm gonna shift the camera over here so you can see this. Could we have the next poll? Again, from the... Oh, that's an interesting tie. Again, we'll close polling at uh, seven, once we get 70 comments. <laughs> uh, so Mimi hasn't even asked me to uh, explain why she's immediately gone salary. I I want to uh, again repeat to you guys: we've got to stop thinking from our perspective and start thinking from uh, the boss's perspective. And most of you have gone for career development. I'm going to continue with my next question, which is why. And if you don't guys don't mind, could you start answering in the chat? Okay, that's a good point. Gal Gadot has hit the nail on the head there. Um, I'm just going to read it out. No, it's going wrong. Oh, there we go. Too many answers. I have to scroll up. Uh, where have you gone, Gal Gadot? Why aren't you in my life? Ah, here we go. Gal Gadot. But the boss always wants a high qualified person with the lowest wages. Absolutely. That is the thing that you want to focus on. They don't want to pay you a lot of money, but they want you to have lots of experience. Career development is an interesting term. Career development can mean two different things to different people. To the boss, career development tells them that you're going to be there for a long time. That they don't have to worry about hiring a new person, that you are not going to leave the company, that you want to learn. If you say that you're focused on salary, they're going to think, A, this person is greedy, or B, this person will leave and go to the next company that will offer them a higher salary. So you always want to talk about career development because that tells the boss underneath the surface that you are going to be there for a long time and that they aren't going to have to uh, pay your wages for a year and then you're going to leave. That's a very difficult one. Right. Okay, not Gal Gadot FT. <laughs> well, we don't know. It could be Gal Gadot. She could have joined this. Her English is okay if you've seen her in interviews. Maybe she wanted to join. We might have Gal Gadot in the audience. We might. Right, last question before we go on to the next section. Cookies or ice cream? This is the most important question of all. If you answer this correctly, you will get this job. If you answer it incorrectly, you won't. Hello, the person in the background of Ninja Essie. I'm going through people. Ninja Red. Ooh, I get the reference. Good choice there. And that's a, by the way, you've drawn my attention. I'm going to ask you a question about this. Okay. Hey. Hey, yeah. Uh, so, and well, Ninja Red, uh, first off, I mean, the chat is saying ice cream. Is that your decision as well? Or do you want to change to cookies? No, I'd go for chocolate cookies. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to interrogate this a little bit. Let's share the results first. There we mm. go. Ice cream has won out. Now, first off, as you guys may all be aware, this is a stupid question. Agreed? Does anybody um, think? I think it's an, a good icebreaker. It's a good icebreaker. Well, that might be a thing. It's a thing to be aware of. We're getting a lot of people talking in the chat. Let's put it up there. Ice cream men's all types of heart problem. Oh, dear. I think uh, somebody has had a breakup because they're talking about broken hearts in the comment section. So that's <laughs> a thing. So, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, well, great. I'm glad that people are able to talk about this. Um, yes, it's a stupid question, but we can make this answer not stupid. We can make this answer applicable to a job interview. I am going to rub my lips because I've got something on it. So, uh, first off, Ninja Red, which have you decided? You've decided cookies or ice cream? Cookies. Cookies. Okay. I'm going to ask you the difficult question. Why did you choose cookies? Well, apart from cookies taste so good, um, I believe that I can um, break cookies into small chunks and share them with my colleagues or my friends. So, uh, and when I, you share something to other people, it usually gives uh, you a good first impression and then um, then you can build a great relationship with them and so on, which then leads you to a, a great success. Yeah, I think I, I think that's a I mean, you've got almost a nine out of 10 answer there. And that's so that's a really good answer to that. Could we try and uh, like. So I like that you can share the cookies. That's a really good uh, way to do that. How might sharing cookies help you in a job situation in a team? Well, uh, when you um, when you gain that trust uh, from other people, uh, that means you can actually uh, work in a, a group environment, and then it can um, well. And then you can uh, get things done easier. So, um, and that would leave a, a, a great impression, a magnificent impression for the, uh, for the boss. That's, oh, how it. that's a good thing. So even though this is a stupid question, we can still come up with a good answer to it by starting to link it to uh, the important job skills that are necessary, things like teamwork. If I go for chocolate cookies, I can share them out to the office. If I share them, my coworkers will appreciate me. If they appreciate me, they're more likely to work well with me. If we work well together, this is going to improve team morale and make it more likely that the team is going to succeed. Again, stupid question, but the answer you gave is still very, uh, it, it can still be applied to the team and is still good. So uh, what's your team called? Serial killer. Not oh, sorry. the serial killers. Serial uh, killers? No, 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 that serial is the serial, you know, serial. Like so breakfast cereal yeah, and then cornflake. Oh, okay. Not okay. The other cereal. <laughs> Fine. That would be scary. Fine. Fair enough. We could, uh, uh, I am going to give 10 points to breakfast cereal killers out there. Uh, let's have a quick look at the chat uh, and see there. Uh, you can buy your coworkers some ice cream too, one for each. Good answer. Yeah, absolutely. Really, it doesn't matter what answer you give in this situation as long as you tie it to the work and tie it to how you can help improve either the team or the boss's respective. Um, there was uh, another one from Not Justin Bieber. You can have cookies with ice cream, which I think is the perfect answer, sir. Twenty-five points to Not Justin Bieber's team, because that uh, that is very nice. Uh, most of my friends sell cookies, and cookies be can be sent to friends, coworkers by motorcycle without getting melted. Good strategic thinking there from Not Ka uh, Kendall Jenner. Right, guys, we're going to move on to the next one. We've got a lot of ninjas up front. I just like the fact that we've got ninjas here. Let's move on to some other people. Hello, Giggy. And that's a f I hope you're enjoying it. Hello, not Vin Diesel. Uh, let's go on to the next slide. So uh, let's try and make this visible for people in the chat. I'm going to move you guys all into the middle so you can see it. So, to be successful in applying for a job, you need to think like the boss. You need to stop uh, thinking like Anne Hathaway, because you guys are all young, you're beautiful, handsome, uh, intelligent, but maybe a little bit naive. You need to stop thinking like uh, Anne Hathaway and start thinking like Meryl Streep, who in this film role, The Devil Wear Pra, very famous film, Sorry, Devil Wears Prada. Uh, she's a bit of a bacon, Italian, tomato, cheese, and ham sandwich. You need to start thinking like her. 
So we're going to start putting you guys again into breakout rooms. Uh, we'll see you in there. I want you guys to discuss three questions. Uh, I'll join the breakout room later. You know, the questions are, what, what is the boss scared of? That's an important question. What does a boss think about in their day-to-day -day work? And what is the boss scared about when they hire a new employee? When they are interviewing you, what are they scared about? So um, if we could start putting people into the breakout rooms, I will say goodbye, Robert Downey Jr. Goodbye, Ninja Bubbles. Goodbye, Ninja Red. Uh, goodbye, not Hermione Granger. Goodbye, not Brad Pitt. Are you sure you're not Brad Pitt? You really sure? Ah, yeah. Goodbye, not... Hey, goodness. Bye, people. So, if we shunt you guys all into the breakout rooms, I want you to discuss these questions. And we'll let people go at this point. Ah, uh, the internet. Do we have Canada in? Ooh, not Daniel Radcliffe. Hiya. Yeah. We'll see you on the other side. Fiesta. Ooh. M, that's right. So, but surely we'll see you guys on the other side. Good luck. Uh, do we have. Now, because we don't necessarily have many people who are uh, necessarily active, we want to go on to the next step. So, guys, in the YouTube chat, come a bit closer. Crawl in. We're going to do some batchot. That's the right pronunciation, right? Yep. Yep, that's right. That's a five. I feel like a German security guard. I, I should be saying it with an <laughs> I aggressive. That was very funny the first time. Oh, yeah, well, it's got to be funny the third time I say it as well. It's funny in my head. Anyway, one moment while I take a sip of water. Yeah. So we've put people into a breakout room mm. uh, beforehand to start making them feel safe. Now we're doing the, uh, We're putting them into a breakout room for a different reason. The reason why we're putting them into the breakout room right now is uh, in order for them to start doing what is known in academic terms as scaffolding. What scaffolding is, you might know about scaffolding on a building, you know, the bamboo that goes around it that keeps yeah. it up. Yeah. In learning, there's an important concept to understand that learning doesn't happen when people are told knowledge. It's not enough to teach at people directly and just, here's knowledge. Yeah. Because it's going to fall out the other end. The important step between learning and uh, receiving knowledge is to practice. True. And in order to practice, you need to build up to that practicing. It's not enough to just tell people, okay, here is information. Now go uh, fly a jet. You need to build up to it slowly. You need to uh, give them the information, let them use that information in a closed context, and then open up to uh, greater practice. This is often known as praxis, which is a fancy term. The, the act of taking knowledge and turning it into an actual activity. Yeah. So how do we do this in CCT Multi? What is the approach we take? I think uh, I feel like at, like this is the whole reason why we 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 initiated CCT to begin with. Uh, again, like with our past experiences, we we know that even in in schools, for that matter, like with the education system, it's not uh, it's not very student oriented. It's more uh, teacher oriented, and it's yes. very it's very didactic. It's it's ninety percent teacher and ten percent student. Ideally, we want it to be the other way around. Yes. And um, I mean, coming back to the question that we had asked the participants in the very beginning about English, which I thought was very interesting, some of the answers mm -hmm. about uh, how there's, because we live, in a, we live in a country that does not use English, so there's no platform for it. And also uh, what, what came across also as very interesting to me was the point uh, made about judgments. And I yeah. think I, I think in such an environment where you are being judged or you're being told that your opinion doesn't matter, it would shut people down. Mm. And I think at CCT, what, what we do is we provide that space for practice. We, we like through our community events, which we have every Saturday, um, 
we we invite it it's free we invite people to come and join us because we want them to practice what they've learned and especially in this pandemic situation like with covid jamie we <laughs> we can't do uh, events physically but uh, in fact, if anything at all, I'm actually quite grateful for online platforms because we can then channel our events over there and actually open up the the, the avenue for more people, you know, to to come and join and create and create that that space for practice. And I think with in CCT, this is how we do it. Like we teach them yeah. professional skills, we give them the tools, but we don't just leave them halfway through. Yeah. We actually then pull them in and say, hey, we have an event every Saturday, which is organized by CCT. And in that event, we get to practice English with each other with content that are related to everyday life. So yeah. I think I think one good example is like this Saturday will be uh, this upcoming Saturday. We will be having an event about uh, simpler steps towards help. And mm. we'll be inviting like a guest who is an English speaking guest and which then pushes I mean, it, it's an interesting topic, right? And I think it also yeah. matters that the topic is interesting and it's, and it's, uh, it's mm -hmm. what people are drawn to it, you know, like, like yeah. for instance, today you could have, you could have just said, uh, doing excellent grammar. Uh, yeah. Grammar or, yeah. or for that matter, even uh, job interview, you know, but mm -hmm. it's, it's not, uh, it's, it's not how we attract people to learn. We also have to make sure that the way we deliver our stuff our materials are attractive right from the beginning to the very end. And I think this is how we do it at CCT. Like, yes, we teach them, we give them opportunity and we do a lot of interactions at CCT. And what I love about we do, what we do is the most of, I mean, part of what we do is we actually provide them with that platform. And, and that yeah. excites me because I understand yeah. that we, we live in a country like for you, Jamie, you come from Scotland, probably. It's easy you know, for me. It, yeah. I mean, you, you get to use the language practically every day. But in Indonesia, you know, it's it's our it's a second language, yeah. And, and and you're lucky if you actually meet people who do not judge you for speaking English. Yeah, <laughs> and I and I think what you were saying earlier about how in uh, when in education a lot of people they're given the knowledge they get to practice it once and then I'm going to be unprofessional and show the fact that I'm not wearing shoes right now. You get kicked out the door. And it's told, okay, if you've forgotten any of it, we don't care. If you haven't, if you're not feeling very confident, we don't care. Go out. And it's the equivalent of throwing somebody who's read about swimming in a book and taking them to the ocean and just going, go swim, avoid that shark. Uh, don't touch that. That's poisonous. No wonder people break down in that situation. No wonder they find it difficult. No wonder they get scared and they, they kind of shut down and, the important thing, uh, again, going back to that first breakout room, safety, safety, and then the opportunity to practice. And if you don't have that, no wonder you're not learning. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, and, um, I mean, like, uh, sorry to cut you, but then like in no, that please. in that breakout that we have, that we're, I mean, like right now we're having a breakout room. We had one previously. The idea is to create that, that community where people are interacting and getting to know each other and keeping it small. Because mm -hmm. this would be impossible with 100 people in a room. You know, yeah. like at the end of the day, you have to minimize and you have to so, be, so to to remove the intimidation, that feeling of intimidating, uh, intimidated feeling and to bring that safe space into yeah. the learning process. I, I think Absolutely. Like, I mean, like in my experience of teaching, I noticed that um, people, even myself, for that matter, like I, I can get very uncomfortable when it's a huge when I'm around a lot of people, like, I don't know where to begin. I don't know where to start. I don't know who to talk to. Yeah. I, I'm pouring more water in. I am listening. Go ahead. But I've been talking a lot and I, I'm, my mouth is drying yeah. out. <laughs> no, I, I, you, you, you still have a lot of talking to do. <laughs> Good Lord, yes. Uh, we're going to give them one more minute and then we'll yeah. take people back out and we'll see what answers they've got. But yeah, I, I mean, this is going a little bit off script, but just the fact that you mentioned my upbringing in Scotland, I'm thinking, how did I learn English as a native speaker? How did people here learn Indonesian as native Indonesian speakers? And it was, uh, you know, we were given lots of time to practice as babies. Our mother was always supportive. If we didn't get the wording quite right, they didn't tell us, no, bad learner. They instead, they would go, oh, you try, great. And if we got it wrong, we got feedback and about it. No, that's not how you say it, dearie. You say it, mommy. 
and that's if, and so we were supported in it yeah. anyway that's off script but no, we... that, that's a great point and i was also thinking about it like uh like let me ask you a question jamie like how yes. do you learn something best like are you are you a visual learner or are you so are you somebody who listen who learns when uh you listen to something like how do you learn best well i'm i'm highly dyslexic um I'm not sure many people maybe in the comments know what dyslexia is. You can do a quick, um, I'm not sure if I can actually, no, I don't, they didn't give me the power to write on the screen. I can't think why. Good on uh, that. <laughs> Just kidding. But we'll, we'll, uh, we'll maybe put a little comment into the chat about it and people can look it up on, uh, on Wikipedia, but it's a learning difficulty. It means that I don't, um, I can't take in uh, audio information very well. Um, and I have a terrible short-term memory. So I'm going to brag here and then I'm going to be pathetic. Like my visual acuity is very high. Um, last time I checked when I got an assessment for dyslexia, I was at 160 on visual acuity on the IQ things, but I was 87 on uh, for short-term memory. Um, by the way, I am I never trust IQ scores for anything to do with intelligence because I am incredibly stupid a lot of the time. But the point there is I, I wasn't going to learn if people just talked at me. I need to see it written down. And vice versa, you guys are going to be learning different from me. And so uh, if, if teachers are only talking at the thing and not listening to their students and listening how the students learn or watching them and learning how the students are learning, they're not going to be as effective. Learning is what students do. Teaching yeah. is what is supposed to help learning. The objective should always be learning. Um, yeah. anyway. uh, and and right. yeah, like I, I totally agree with you. And um, just carrying on with that from that, like like for you, and I'm actually like you. Like I need to see it, then it actually registers in in my in my system. But if somebody yeah. just says it, I'm like, huh, what? What what did you just say? You know, like it doesn't really doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, I need to see it I, and I need to probably hear it a couple of times before it actually registers in my brain. So, you know, people are different. And I, I know some of my friends or some of my colleagues, like they actually learn better when they are listening, which I find quite incredible. Yeah. Like, they can actually listen to audio, audio books. I can't do this. You know, everybody so is saying, different. Yeah, so sorry. Everybody is different. So my point is like one system to fit everybody. I think that's rather unfair. And this is, again, why. CCT happened because we feel that when we keep it small, we're able to pay attention to every student and meet them where they're at. Yeah. Because until and unless that is not done, we can be rest assured that at least half of the class or more than half of the class is not, uh, is not in tune. Absolutely. Yeah. I, upon that point, we should probably hear yes, a little bit back from each learner. Yeah. Uh, Minkot, Ruth, Indan, would you mind, pardon me, I just spat, um, would you mind bringing people back? They, we hopefully have some interesting answers from people. Uh, I'm going to take another swig because I am parched. Okay, they will be back in 20 seconds. Right. Perfect. Thank it you, is, Ruth. I'm not sure if people can see, but it is really hot in here at this time of the day because we get direct sunlight in. So I am gently cooking here. Also, I like to talk. And this is a problem for me if I have to talk more in the future because my mouth will dry out. All right, Theo. Hello, Hello. welcome back. I'm going to quickly, oh, no, the chat is not working. He just got I... me off. That's oh, okay. okay. Oh, well. I'm sorry, Ninja Red. We'll, we'll do better next time. We'll give you more time. Um, I've already asked you, so I think I'm going to go for somebody else. I like your name, Ninja Panda. I think I'm going to uh, I'm going to wait until everybody's back, and then I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Thank um, you, <laughs> uh, Ruth. Can I confirm that everybody is back? That we're all doing good. Uh, intern. Everybody is back. Hello, not Olivia Newton John. Hi, uh, and that's it. that's that's a great name. Uh, Oh, it's Canada. Here's my dyslexia here. I read that as Canada, and I was like, I'm glad that the nation of Canada is dropping in. Kid Drow. 
Now that drow are a type of elf from D and D. I'm showing how much of a nerd I am at this point. Hello, Rati. Hello. Let's have a look at the people at the back. Akbar the crew. Nice. Ooh, okay, let's get people back in. Oh, okay. So Ninja, you are Ninja Pandu. You are on the front. So I'm going to throw you a question. Um, could I ask everybody who uh, who's had a chance to discuss, could you put some of your answers into the chat? Uh, so in particular, what is the boss scared of? I'm very interested in that. Now, uh, Ninja Panda, I am, uh, how shall I put it? I'm a contradarian at terms, so I'm not going to start with one. I'm going to start with two. Would you mind explaining, uh, talking a little bit about what your team was uh, talking about in the breakout room? Uh, what does the a boss think about in their day-to-day -day work? Okay, thanks, thanks, Ed Sheeran. Oh, sorry, uh, Chris Pat. <laughs> to you. <laughs> uh, okay, so so my team, uh, our team, uh, we talked about like uh, what the do the boss thinks about their day-to-day -day work. I mean, at first we we're talking about uh, mainly the the private sector, which is more to like the business where it's more money, money oriented. But then we started talking like, maybe not all companies are money oriented. Uh, some some are gov um, companies are like uh, government or, um, offices or NGOs where they probably have other things to worry more than the money. Of course, money is also important. Uh, but then we also think about the, the longer, uh, further ahead, like instead of like, the money now, but the investment for the long term. So um, we actually think like thinking about the staff in a day-to-day -day basis is actually quite important because um, good staff equals good performance equals good results. Um, so then instead of like the boss thinking about the money and uh, the target of how much this mon this uh, staff can bring the money to the company, but maybe think about like, okay, how can we mentor the staff to make this person more capable and then being able to for this person to grow and to perform better without any supervision, and at the long run will uh, eventually bring more money or bring more um, benefit to the organization. Okay, that's a, that's a very interesting point. It's going in a completely different direction than what I'm going in, but I I like it nonetheless. I think it's a it's a good point that you're making. Um, and I think it's absolutely where, uh, if we do further talks, I want to uh, I want to also talk about kind of leadership and uh, where we need to go in 10, uh, 20 years. We want bosses to be like that then. However, uh, I'm going to, I, I'm still going to give your team points. Your team gets nine points for that answer because it was a good answer. I don't think, as you said earlier, most people in the private sector, their bosses are not going to be able to do that. 10% uh, of bosses are great and can do absolutely that. 10% of bosses are complete psychopaths, like Donald Trump. Uh, but most bosses are in the middle. And most bosses are going to have difficulty uh, paying a lot of attention to their employees. They frankly are probably going to want to try and let their employees just get on with the job. They're not going to focus so much on them. The best case uh, scenario, you get a good boss. I've been lucky to have three good bosses in my life who have developed me, who have supported me. One of them is over here. Hello. Hi, Multi. <laughs> Uh, and, and that's if, but I think in the most cases, the boss doesn't have enough time to focus on their employees. They're too busy focusing on corporate strategy, how to look good in front of their bosses up in the CEO level, uh, budgets, targets. Only about 10% of their time are they able to focus on that stuff. Where, so a lot of the time, the boss isn't thinking about the employee, I, I would say. In, in, in they should. Everything you said was correct, they should, but I think for the reality for most people is we have to accept that bosses are often mediocre or okay at their job, and they're probably not going to be able to focus on us. But again, nine points to your team for that. Let's have a look at, uh, so again, thank you very much for that. And again, I, I really want to talk further in the future about where leadership, where management should be going, which is absolutely where I agree. 
Uh, okay, uh, we've got uh, we've gone off topic in the chats. Um, Ninja Red, stop distracting from the topic. Uh, the boss on the consoles is scaring me if we don't if we're not able to finish our project in the due date. My experience. Yeah, I I think that's an important point. The the boss doesn't necessarily always want to focus on you. If they can focus on something else like the target, that's what they'll focus on. Losing their loyal employees, especially the ones who can't trust be trusted, because it's always hard work to find new employees. That's a really good point. Bosses are scared that if they hire you, you're going to leave. Bosses are scared that if they hire you, you're going to lose the money. Bosses are scared that if you do a really bad job, they will get fired. In actual fact, the dominant emotion of every boss in an interview is fear. This is something we need to be aware of. Our job as uh, interviewees, as people who want a job from the boss, from the HR manager or the manager in question, is to be as unscary as possible to demonstrate to them that we are not going to lose the money. And to do that, we have to focus on the thing. Coming back to uh, Ninja Panda's point, really good bosses, if you're lucky, will be there and will support you. Uh, most bosses are not that great. Uh, going up, Donald Duck, uh, Donald Duck. The boss is scared of not hitting the target and get the company fired from the shareholders. Again, really good point there. The boss should be there to support you, but many bosses are going to fail to do that, and many bosses aren't even going to consider it their job to be there for you. So we have to prepare for the worst and assume that our boss is either Donald Trump or okay. We can't assume that the boss is going to be good at, at their job. So this is the thing. Anyway, achieving targets. Uh, we've got the boss is, scary, is scared of the boss's boss and how they see their performance. A really good point. You're not just applying to them, you're applying to them so that they can look good for the people above them. Uh, well, no, <laughs> went horribly wrong there. Please don't fire me, Multi. <laughs> Thank you, Bandu, uh, Banda, for that. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Keeping a trusting staff and paying the trusting staff, they would rather save the money, but yes, in a special case, you're lucky to have a generous boss. This is a good point. Absolutely, personal experience. And it depends upon the kind of companies you're applying to. If they're private companies, you're more likely to look at them. Uh, they're more likely to be target focuses. If they're government, they're more likely to be personnel focused. So again, the answer depends upon what kind of company you're applying for. Um, we're giving general answers here because there's a lot of you. We can't be specific. Um, this is the problem with this thing. Right. Shall we go on um, to the next one uh, at this point? So next up, um, we're going to put you guys into breakout rooms again. Uh, I'm going to ask you guys uh, to think about how you can signal to the boss that you are not going to lose the money. What things can you do to demonstrate to them that you are a safe investment for the company? And in the background, you can hear that there is a Gojek driver. I do apologize. So I'm going to give you guys five, uh, five minutes to kind of come up with answers for this. We're going to, I want you to put them into the chat. Uh, we'll have a little bit of chat back and forth responding to it. So thinking off the top of your head, how can we signal to the boss? One way to signal is that we dress professionally. In the meantime, uh, could I ask you guys to put into the chat your, what ways can you signal to the boss that you're making the right decision? By the way, this is a competition YouTube comments, see if you can come up with more op uh, options than the people in the Zoom. If the people in the Zoom come up with more, they get more points. If the YouTube comments gets more, then they get more. Okay, at which point, what other ways can we signal to the boss that they're making the right decision? We'll go for that. <laughs> okay, let's see, we'll go through that. 
I'd like to have a chat in the thing. Hello, not Beyonce Gasilla. You look different to how I would imagine, but it's nice to have you here. Hiya. I will go next on there. Uh, hello, not Angelina. Speak clear and articulate. Act confidently. I like that. Uh, <laughs> I like your response, Panda. Uh, Ninja Panda, that's a good one as well. I like this one. Good manners. That's a really good one. Let's go on to later on. I say, hello, Mati Octavian. That's an interesting name. I like that. The boss complains. Okay. Be vocal and confident. Good choice for Justin Bieber there. Not Rachel Green. Show examples from previous organizations, experience that relates to the job requirements. Good answer. I'm glad that what we're saying is coming through. Show the commitment with discipline. Not Donald Trump. I'm glad you're not Donald Trump. <laughs> Considering I was just rude about him. Uh, be punctual for everything. Good. That's a really good example. Show him our positive vibes. Angelina Jolie, of course. Donald Duck, give the boss more than he or she asks. If, you, if he or she asks for two, give them five. I like that. That's a good one. Let's go on a bit. Hello, Taylor Swift again. Hello, July, not Justin Bieber. I'm getting a message through on my WhatsApp. Let's see what the message is. Getting smiley faces. Hey, my mum is trying to call me. I'm going to tell her not to continue. But if mum, if you're watching in the YouTube, hello. I hope your trip to the Highlands is going well. Not Billy Illish. Display confidence. Be polite. Speak with data. Show how you solve the problem. Situation, action, result. That's really good. I like that. Um, not Billy Eilish. Your team gets uh, an additional five points for that. I like that. Hello, not Rachel Green. Not Donald Trump. Ooh, we've... Oh, no, Donald Duck. Sorry. I thought we had two Don uh, Donald Trumps. Respect teamwork. Be tr polite and try to look well educated. These are good points. Okay. Um, Chris, Harry, could I ask you to put what the YouTube comment section has come up with? How many have they come up with? Let's compare them. I am counting one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm, I'm counting about seven here. Chris, <laughs> please. <laughs> uh, hello, uh, Butterbot. Could you give us the answer to how many the YouTube channel has got? You're looking mighty dapper, Ninja Panda. It's a kind of it's a mighty fine look you've got there. Now, make sure that you use moderate fragrance just to create a warm impression. I like that. Be responsible. Be on time. Those are good ones. Any other ones that we're getting through there? Be polite, respect your colleagues, give the encouragement and work hard for the boss. That's a good one. Okay, I think we'll call it to a, an end at this. Be humble, always a good choice. Do overtime. Yes, say you're willing to do overtime, but for the rest of us who don't want to do overtime, please don't do overtime. <laughs> Highlight the accomplishments. Know that you uh, that you what you offer to the position. That's a that's a good one. Right. At which point I'm giving the YouTube channel three points, and I'm giving everybody in the Zoom seven. So, here are a couple of ones that we want to talk about uh, here. Uh, dress professionally. Always a good idea. You don't want to look like you're not ready for work. Arrive before the interview. What will the boss think if you're late? If you are late to the interview, you're gonna be late to work. If you're late to work, you're gonna upset the team. If you upset the team, you're gonna lose the money. If you lose the team money, you lose the boss money. If you lose the team so much money that the boss goes to jail, they're not gonna be happy with you. That, that's maybe an extreme example. But the point here is arrive beforehand, demonstrate that you're going to arrive on time for work. Know your CV. That's an obvious one. Know what you're going to talk about. Anticipate the questions. Make sure you have prepared answer. Here's one to focus on. Focus on talking slowly and clearly. 
when we're scared, we tend to get overexcited. We tend to swap very quickly. We tend to go off on our own and we try to finish up every sentence by filling in every moment of possible uh, conversation with uh, as much information as we can. And we tend to lose breath and our coherence goes down and it's not helpful. We have to slow down to what is slower than what we're comfortable with. This is about practice. The more you practice talking slowly, the easier it is to do. Make two or three points with real examples and focus on the employer's needs. Most importantly, be positive and sell yourself. Never tell the boss that they are taking a risk. Never tell them that you can't, um, that you're not good at something or that you're okay at something. Tell them, I can do this. No could, no may, no might, no will, no would. If you are an English teacher, don't use modal verbs. I've gone black and white for some reason. I don't know why. Doesn't matter. Use will or can. Those are the two most important uh, verbs that you, uh, modal verbs that you're going to use. I will be able to do that or I can do that. Never tell them may, never tell them could. Because that tells them they're taking a risk. Right, we're coming to the end, guys. We're on the final stretch. I'm sure you're all uh, getting ready and maybe a bit hungry. We're going to go through a couple bit more. I'm going to adjust my seating because it keeps going down. So we've heard real examples a lot here. You need to give real examples in an interview. How can you do that in English? Well, what you focus on are W questions, specifically these three. Can I recommend that everybody, um, if you can, take a screen print of this? Because these are what we're going to use in the next session. So. Um, it's important that you give real examples, but it can be difficult to figure out how you're going to do that. The way to do that is when you think of the example that is real, you try and answer the question when. Give the year, give the month, give the time frame. Explain, answer the question where. Where did this experience take place? Name either the company, the organization, the place, the country, doesn't matter and then explain the context. What was happening at the time? Why did you have to do this? Go through a number of questions on this. Don't focus necessarily on this next task on the details. We'll go into that in future sessions about how you can start integrating more useful details. For now, I want you guys to focus on the when, the where, and the what. Don't worry about the why, don't worry about the how, don't worry about the who. Focus on when, where, what. So, uh, or indeed how. We'll come to those later on in future sessions. So, we come to the final task. We're going to now go off into breakout groups, and you guys are going to come up with practice answers, some model answers for yourself. You're going to do it as a team. I want you guys to work together, support each other, help each other uh, come up with the answer. I don't care about the grammar of the answer. I don't care about the vocabulary of the answer. I only care that it answers this question and that you add on information about when the real example happened, where, and what. So I'm going to now give you an answer to this question that is mine. I'm going to ask you to go into the breakout room and come up with an answer that is yours. So here's my answer to the question, what are your strengths and weaknesses? My strengths and weaknesses are, my strengths it, uh, are my creativity and my hard work. My weakness is my time management and ability to prioritize. When have I demonstrated my creativity? I have demonstrated my creativity many times in classes. The example I'm going to give for this one was last year, around August, when I did a major event with 100 participants. I was doing it with Britzone, where? In the, um, I've Department forgotten the place. Ministry of Education. Ministry of Education. Thank you for helping me. It's oh. a bit scary to do this. In the Ministry of Ed Education. 
what was I doing? I was giving a presentation to over 100 people. This presentation required people to be active, and I had only ever done it with, uh, uh, with 30 people beforehand. And so in, I had to be creative. I had to play around with the process. I had to change the lesson in order to get it to work. I had to make use of the room that I was in. I had to make use of the elevator and the room next door in order to make it work. It required a lot of work. It required me running back and forth, but it was a very successful lesson, nonetheless. This demonstrates my strength, which is creativity and hard work. My weakness is time management and prioritizing. When have I demonstrated my weakness? I demonstrated my weakness in this lesson because we were supposed to get to this point about 20 minutes ago. I am not good at time management. Multi knows this. Where? In my room here. What was the context? this session. Upon which point, guys, I'm going to ask you all to go into the breakout rooms, work together, come up with an answer to the question, what is your strength and weakness? Make sure you use when, where, and what. We'll, uh, we're going to give you 10 minutes to work together to come up with this answer. So we will see you on the other side. Good luck, not Robert Downey Jr. Good luck, Ninja Red. Good luck, Ikwan Sa. Good luck, Rifkin. Good luck, Ninja Yu. Good luck, not Barack Obama. Good luck, not Hermione Granger or da Ra Blech. not Radif Radcliffe. Not Barack Obama. Good luck, you guys. We will see you on the other side. You have 10 minutes. And we'll see where people are going. Please click yes to go into the breakout rooms. We'll start waiting while people are going through. We'll see not Beyonce Giller go in. Hello, Alfin. How are you? Hopefully you guys can join the breakout rooms and have a chance to practice together. Hi, Fadi. Hi, Prima. So, Farah. Oh, I like your picture, Rui. Not Nolan, as in like Nolan North, or as in we'll find out later. Kid Drow, need for sleep. I like that. That's a good picture. Oh, I, I think a lot of them are in, uh, were inspired by you. I oh, see a lot great. of not not Angelina Jolie or not Hermione or not. Um... I, I mean, we can't see their we can't see their faces. They've got their video off. They could actually be double bluffing us. We could have Hermione Granger below. I, I, have, I think Hermione did actually activate, uh, activate her video for a bit and I can assure you that it was not uh, Hermione. Either. Well, maybe okay, not. But maybe we've got Donald Trump in because Donald Trump definitely needs to improve his English. Uh, I would be very thrilled if he actually came for this. Yeah, we could do a lot to help him. I mean, he, I mean, basically he is... He needs help with his vocabulary for one. Yeah, and <laughs> grammar, possibly with content as well. I mean, he is an elementary student at best. Um, he could learn a lot from a lot of the students in Indonesia, I think. Absolutely, so. especially when it comes to grammar. Yeah. Uh, so Donald Trump, if you're listening, and I know you are, come join CCT. We can help you with your English. Jamie, if you do get into trouble for this, I do not know you. <laughs> <laughs> if I end up in Guantanamo Bay because of this event, uh, please, um, I don't know. I, I, look, I think I would look okay in, a red, uh, in an orange jumpsuit. But uh, yeah, please, please tell people about the world if I end up in the CIA black site. I need to adjust my chair again. Come on. So I'm, we're going to assume that uh, the people who are not bouncing in at this point are having issues. So we might as well talk to the people in the YouTube yeah. chat channel. Come a bit closer, guys. Come. We're going to do a bit of batshot. We're going to do a little gossiping in the background. Um, so we're coming to the, the, uh, the final activity. Mm -hmm. We need to have a new rap god. I don't know what that comment is about, but that's, that was uh, about you uh, when you were rapping on um, something of on the previous on the previous slide on the subject of 
what um, how how do you how do you assure the boss that you are somebody who's right to invest in? Was I rapping? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so open. I think I think that is stretching the definition of rap to breaking point. At best, it was an open it was an open mic kind of seventies uh, poem. Ah, oh, my chair is the worst. So w uh, we should probably talk about what we're doing here yeah. at this point. We're coming to the final activity at this point. The aim of this activity is to get people actively using the skills that they are going to use in the mm -hmm. real world. You notice that we've only gone for one question. Um, now, there are thousands of interview questions out there. Almost certainly, most people may be asked this, but I was expect about 50% of you guys are never going to be asked this question. And this comes down to a little bit of the problem with webinars like this, is that you can't be too specific in them. Yeah. What the advantage of them is, is that you can get information out to a lot of people. And so it's important to go for the, as we mentioned here, the basics of how you answer a question. It's important that when you're answering a question in an interview that you give real examples. And so the aim of this lesson, if they remember nothing else from this, is for them to always be thinking, okay, I've given my answer. Did I mention when? Did I mention where? Did I give a real example? If they do that, oh dear, we've got an old dog who is coughing. Oh, Mochi. Hey, Mochi. Hello. Say hi to the people in the internet. Where was I talking? If they remember nothing else from this lesson, then hopefully they will remember that they need to give a real example when they're in the meeting. For the reasons that we mentioned earlier, that it, uh, it helps the boss trust them, that it demonstrates how their skills links to the job, it, uh, job requirements, and it's an important skill. However, in order to really be successful at job interviews, you need to go beyond this. You need to go into the details and the problem about that, that is that you can't do that in a large setting. You need to kind of condense it down to smaller groups. In order to effectively practice, you need to be practicing with people who are at your level, who are having ex similar experiences, who are doing the same thing as you are. In this kind of session, some people are intermediate, some people are upper intermediate, some people are complete beginners. Yeah. And so in order for this to be effective, it needs to start with this and then lead into smaller, more strategic, more, sorry, uh, more targeted group lessons, which is what we provide at CCT. Yeah. Um, and so this is hopefully for you guys an understanding of if you are going to give uh, a webinar or professional thing, and yourself that you realize this, that you realize what webinars are good for and what they're not so effective at. And make sure that you fill in the gaps as we do in CCT. Um, yeah. So, yeah, um, we need to give them another six minutes. I don't know, shall we be brave? Uh, uh, Ruth, uh, are you able to respond? At this point, yes, yes, I'm actually in the other uh, breakout room. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it is it possible for us to join one of the breakout rooms, or do we? Uh, will the video follow us? Or... No, no, no. No. Okay. No. Okay. We'll just. I mean, part of this is uh, kind of respecting the fact that we're going to make a, an important point here. Ideally, in the best case scenario, we would join the room and we would support the learning. Right. However, this is an important point for any trainee teacher to learn. The teacher should not be essential for the learning. If they, if at this point they cannot do it themselves, then the teacher has not done their job. Ideally, the teacher should only talk about 10% of the time in the lesson. Yeah. Now, you, you know me multi, you know that I'm a narcissist. I, I, I don't do that. I talk for about 60% of the time. Um, a good lesson for me is when I'm only talking 40% of the time and the students are talking 60% of the time. Yeah. Um, why is it necessary for the students to talk, uh, would you say? Um, again, I think the benchmark has, has to always be us, like as in 
us as an individual, like when do we learn best? You know, like I remember being in school and um, because I grew up here, so um, the education system that I was, uh, that I had to accommodate was of course the the, lo- the Indonesian education system as in, in the country. And um, I think a lot of people can vouch for this, that it is a very didactic approach where the teachers definitely talking more. And today Could I we interrupt? Act- Sorry. Yeah. Would you mind explaining what, uh, well, you just uh, did, uh, just talking about didactic approach. What is a didactic approach? So it's, 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 when, um, it's when the teacher is talking more than the student and the student has very little to no, no space at all to actually respond. And if anything at all, which is quite unfortunate, is um, a, part of the reason why the school has accommodated this system is because it's largely integrated with the culture, as in respect the adults, right? Mm-hmm. But I think what I think when it comes to education, we need to we need to reevaluate that because I don't know about you, Jamie, but if I am not uh, if I if I'm not practicing, okay, let's say for example, uh, I want to drive a car. OK, mm-hmm. and I go to a driving school and all they give me is a manual and they say, OK, here's the manual. Read it. And I'm like, do you, do you really think after reading that I could actually drive? Nope. <laughs> I think you would go. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll actually kill somebody on the road yeah. you know, <laughs> and get into trouble. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is which is which is what happens to again, like using that example now in, in the education system is that we when we just theoretically explain something to, to, to students, yes, they understand the concept, but they don't know how to practice it because they're not put in the situation. So what we're doing at the moment is giving, these, giving the participants an opportunity to, to apply what they have learned. And we have given them guidance prior to this. So you answering this question for them in the very beginning actually helps them to get started. So they know, okay, well, when I enter the breakout room, I know what I need to do. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're, you're actually the, that dri- that uh, driver who's sitting next to them, training them how to drive instead of just giving a manual and telling them, okay, read all the PowerPoint slides, now apply. It's not yeah. going to happen. It's not going to happen. So what happens is when, when schools do this or when, when educational institutions do this is when the student goes out, they they literally, well, not kill people, literally, but figuratively, they... <laughs> They, they, because they don't have enough practice, they, they don't know what to do. So eventually what happens is it takes away a lot from their own life in, in, the, in, the, in the career, I mean, in their career life, in their professional life, because all they know is the, the theory, but they don't know how to practice it because the opportunity has never been given to them in school. Yeah, absolutely. And which is why so many people shut down if you ask them, like, yeah. if I go around and I talk to people in English the dominant emotion that they all have is oh god ah. I mean they I, people literally recoil away from me now I'm big I'm ginger uh, I'm also a boule but they shouldn't be responding to me like I'm a hantu or pardon me like a ghost that's come up to kind of steal their soul and that's so if I'm you know I'm not going to punch them if they get an answer wrong but people are so scared of getting it wrong that they just they go into flight or flight mode yeah I mean if, if that's all what you have heard ever since you were young as in like life is black and white and if but there's a wrong answer there's a right answer there's no opportunity to um, question the answer then of course growing up it becomes it becomes a part of you and Hello, it's Beyonce. And it becomes quite difficult to refrain from not doing that because in your early childhood, you've been trained to do that. And then you, you grow up into an adult. I'm not saying change is not possible. It's possible, but it's, it, it becomes more time. challenging. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I think that's where we need to go back to like, what, uh, like Ninja Panda's response. There's more than one right answer. He gave yeah. a perfect answer uh, and he set the context of where that answer was right. Now, I, because I'm a, I'm a teacher and I have to look at the broad audience, I'm going to give a different answer to him. But it, within his context, his answer was perfect. Yeah. Which is why I gave them nine points. But because my, the message he was putting across was not the message I wanted the rest of the audience, I have to spend a lot of time 
uh, kind of explaining to people, no, that's not quite where I'm going. I'm going, I'm more looking specifically at private companies that are big, large multinationals, and they are going to be looking for this. But of course, if you're looking at government organizations, startups, educational uh, businesses, the answer is going to be completely different. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure it was, it's uncomfortable for him to have the teacher tell him that he's wrong in that stuff. And I mean, I was chatting back and forth with him a little bit uh, beforehand just to make sure that it was okay to put him in that position. Um, but recognizing that that isn't like, if you have a different answer from the teacher, that doesn't mean you're wrong. Yeah. And that's uh, something that people find very difficult to Absolutely. mention. And I think as trainers, it's also important how we word ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Like if, it's, if, if, if a participant or a student uh, says something and we feel that it's, let's say it's, let's just say it's, I don't think it's wrong, but if we say, oh, no, you're wrong, that is a mm -hmm. negative connotation. But if we say, okay, why are you saying that? It allows them to explore further because everybody mm -hmm. is coming from a different context. And when they are answering something, they're looking at their context. And ideally, what we want them to do is solve a problem wherever they are. Yeah. Because the the generic, um, I mean, like the generic education system is is... It's not for it. It's not. It's not catered to. Um, it's not catered to segmented needs. Mm -hmm. It's ca it's catered to like like a larger need. But people are actually facing issues in their own context, and if they're Absolutely. not exploring it from there, then how will they solve the problem? Indeed. Yeah. And that's it. There. It's it's all about context. It's all about being specialized. If you treat people like factory products that are going through a production line, you're you're going to waste so much potential. I think this is another important point. Like Einstein didn't come from a major educational institute. Uh, he failed high school. Yeah. He failed maths. He he was working in a dead end job in the patent office, yeah. and yet he changed the world. Yeah. And and there are so many Einsteins out there that have come through this uh, factory system and they think that they're not good enough to do it and they could change the world if they were put in the right situation. Yeah. And I think if Einstein didn't, I think it, it was his mum. I think he, they, he really? she received a letter that, uh, that, was, um, that was actually quite offensive from the teacher to say mm -hmm. that uh, your, I think the letter read something along the lines of your son is stupid, doesn't belong in the in in the school but she didn't actually she didn't actually word it like that to to her son she yeah. said quite the opposite so again back to that support community you know that somebody believes in you somebody trusts in you and that's what cct is about jamie like this is what we do exactly like we want to create that s uh, space for people to know that this is that you do like we're here to facilitate you explore yeah, absolutely. Uh, before we go further, Ruth, uh, would it be okay if you tell the people in the breakout room through their breakout alert that they have two minutes? Let's make their hearts go boom, 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 boom. Let's put a little bit of fear into them. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. They're going to hate me so much. Because that's the thing. You know, speaking from a teacher's perspective, it doesn't mm. matter how long you give people, they will always ask for two more minutes at the end. Yeah. And, and that's actually a good sign, you know, when, when they, they, it means that they've created that connection and it means that they feel that they can approach each other to learn. Because, I mean, Jamie, yeah. technically, we can't always be there, you know? No. But, but, if there are, but if you know that there are people that you can go to, that's a very comfortable and convenient uh, thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I and that's kind of what people want. They want to go out knowing that if they need to, they can come back and they'll be supported and then they can go out. Because everybody wants to, like, this is a terrible thing and you're going to tell me off for saying this. Everybody should know when to fire their teacher. And it shouldn't be because they're bored or because they've lost confidence in themselves. It could, should be because they know they don't need them any longer. And frankly, most people shouldn't leave school, I think. Uh, well, they should fire their teachers because they're not giving them what they want. But they should, most people leave skills completely unprepared for life. And they have to yeah. pick things up together and that stuff. And that's the thing. It's, that, that's very true, which is quite unfortunate. I mean, this is something yeah. that we, it, ideally we should be developed when they're young. You know? And yeah. I think 
education institution and education in industry, like basically the entire field, they need to sort of step back now and sort of reevaluate. You know, are we are we doing the right thing? And, Absolutely. And and this is something that you and I have spoken a lot about when we initiated CCT last year. This was the very reason why we started what we what we started is because we yeah. feel that you no, know, we they, they cannot. It's it's completely unfair to have one methodology applied to so many people uh-huh. you know, and to think that everybody is going to grasp it because everybody's different everybody comes from a different background different context we all have different learning needs we also have different ways to learn uh-huh. absolutely i i mean going back to an earlier point you were making there are no wrong answers but there are wrong chairs i'm going to apologize to everybody but my chair is very old and i need to replace it and it and it will gradually sink me down so i'm going to be spending a lot of time pulling myself up as we go through that shall we close up the room uh ruth and let people come back let's call them back in um to people and um and we will go on from there but yeah people are different everybody learns good keep defending indonesia rifki you're doing the best and that's (laughs) I, I appreciate it. And I, again, going back to, it's important to realize that the answer the teacher is giving is not always going to be the applicable answer to you. I no, mean, and, unless- and, mm-hmm. and as trainers, it, I, I feel it shouldn't come across that way. It should be like, this is my idea. What do you think? If you mm-hmm. have something better, if you have something better to say, then we listen. Our, our yeah. job as trainers is to listen, yeah. not, not and, shut them down. And support. Oh God, he's bailed out. He's, he's parachute, he shoot it. Who's flying Rifki? Oh, phew, you got, you got back in. Why are you on Rifki's case, Jamie? Because I enjoy his background screen. I think I am going to, I'm going to steal that for later on. Uh, next time I'm having a call with my mum on Zoom, I'm going to be in the back of a fighter jet. Right, I, we should, I think we're getting people back slowly but surely. Um, yeah. At this point, I'm going to ask everybody to, uh, I'm not going to ask anybody to give their answer on on camera because I think that's a little bit scary, but could I ask everybody to give some of their sample uh, answers into the chat uh, right now? So you guys can start, if you don't mind, uh, answering the question, what are your strengths and weaknesses? We'll come back to a little bit. We're coming up to the final stretch of this uh, in a bit. I want to be honest with everybody who's in the Zoom. We've been talking about you while you are away in the ch- in the group channel. So we're going to give you a chance to talk about the YouTube channel people later on. So everybody should have a chance to do some bachot. That's right. That's how we say it. Yes. Okay, great. And that's it. Again, always feel like a German security guard when I say that. <laughs> bachot. It's a good word. So let's let's have a look a little bit at it. Not an imposter. Whoa, that's a great name. I love that. Strengths, being critical and see the things that uh, what others don't. Based on my previous, I was seen as a person who has a different point of view and often speak things that need to be spoken to my colleagues. This is a this is a good beginning of a, a, of a thing. I really like what you've put here, not imposter. Can I ask, think of a single time when this happened. Maybe it was last week. Maybe it was last month. Maybe it was last year. Can you, um, in the in the chat, tell me what year, what month this experience happened? Because it's a really good answer, but the only thing I need to add is a specific date. One real example, when. Um, so let's see it. But other than that, that's a damn near perfect answer as far as kind of approach. We just need a specific time and ideally a specific context. What company was this? What, if you don't want to name the company, then just put in McDonald's. Uh, good at public speaking, be neutral, trustworthy. Not Angelina Jolie. I should think that you're good at public speaking. She's a very good speaker. Can you, uh, can you, again, going back to these things, when, when have you been a good public speaker? Was it last week? Was it last month? Was it last year? Uh, what was the context? Was it at work? Was it in uh, a private charity? Where was it? Was it at home on Zoom? Was it? 
when I mean, I, well, I attend this forum earlier to make sure that I follow this forum from the beginning. Good, that's uh, not Zan uh, Malik. You have given a real example there. Time on focus details. Perfect. The you've you followed the instructions well. You may be in a job interview. You might want to mention another experience than the job interview. But in this context, nine uh, out of ten answer. Really good answer. You're using the specific details there. We've got a lot more coming up. Ma bad at time manager, but don't worry. I could take a reminder for that. That's a good thing. Again, Angelina Jolie. When you mention a weakness, mention how you're overcoming it, what ways you can do it. But again, uh, I would say give a specific time when you have done that. So for example, uh, last week, I'm also bad at time management. Last week, I had a lesson that had been rescheduled from earlier. I had completely forgotten about it because I'm bad at time management. But because I put a note in my phone about it, I realized 10 minutes before the meeting that I had it um, because I got a notification on my phone. Um, you have never seen a man get out of a shower so quick. Why did I have to shower in my room? Uh, don't ask that question. But again, we need to give a specific example of when we've overcome that weakness. Yeah, no worries, Febby. We all, this is why what we're talking about. Work with the answer together. Get other people to look at your answer. See if you've actually answered it. Because when you're answering the question, it's very scary. Your heart's going to go boom, 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 boom. Oh, my word. It's easy to forget. And this is why we need to practice. <laughs> Not a, Okay. Not an imposter works in McDonald's. Uh, my experience happened on November uh, 2019. Perfect. Thank you, no, uh, not an imposter. That's the kind of answer we want. One that is specific, that is real. You've given the example. I like how you've talked about McDonald's. McDonald's is a terrible company. We should <laughs> not talk about it. Uh, not Kendall, I like to be especially fun for it, but my ex loves to take everything easy so they usually don't come up to the meeting at the right time. Yeah, we should, my weakness, my ex. Uh, I become sub of event division and I got panicked almost a little bit because I was scared that it would be a bad ceremony. I'm with you there. Uh, I mean, as a fellow person who's presenting, I'm with you, Vin, Vin Diesel. I was experiencing that as well. Again, um, nine out of 10 answer. Could you give the month or the year that the last time you had an event that scared you? The last event that scared me would have been, I think, probably in August. I'm trying to think of the last big event that we did. It was probably in August when we had, uh, when we were arranging for um, stuff. I'm trying to think which one. Yeah, it'll come to me later. Uh, experience being a bar stuff. Great FND. Great. I love the use of uh, January until then. Perfect. Hi, not an imposter. It's nice to see your face. Are you sure you're not an imposter? Weakness, I pay too much attention to the deletions, the solution. Good, nine out of 10, not Rachel Green. Could you give a time where you overcame that weakness? Maybe it was last year, maybe it was in your last company. Again, don't tell me the real company, just you can put McDonald's while I worked at McDonald's or what's, an, what's another bad company, Multi? Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. While I worked at Coca-Cola, let's pick evil companies now. While I worked for something oil or gas or something like that. But I like your strengths. Uh, 2019, GPA, blah, blah, blah. Good point. Um, okay. So I think at this point, we're going to start wrapping up because we're coming up to six and people are going to start getting hungry. So let's uh, start going on. Thank you, everybody, for giving your answers to there. We're going to go into this a little bit more in detail. Before I wrap up, uh, little bits of do's and don'ts um, for interviews. Not Justin Bieber. That Oh, good. I see a date on there, Justin Bieber. Good job. Do's and don'ts of online interviews. We'll go through a couple of the do's. Because here's the first one. Do be aware of how you look on the screen. Um, this is, it's a stupid thing, but it is important. Be aware, don't have the screen so that they're looking at you like this because nobody looks good when you're looking up their nostrils. Similarly, you don't want to be like this. 
this is not a good look. You want to be centered on the screen. You may need to get a bunch of books or maybe a, a, a stand for your laptop. Ideally, the camera should be at your eye level so that you're looking straight ahead, you're looking at it. Be aware of what's in the corner of each side. You want to be balanced. Uh, that's the, be, if you're off to the corner, it doesn't necessarily look like you're engaged. Ooh, where's Mochi gone? Oh, Mochi is down there. Also, if you're like this, this is not a good look either. Keep it like this. Next thing, uh, do practice with friends. Zoom, you can record, record yourself uh, presenting to the, the questions or answering the questions. Practice, guys. It's all about practice. The more you do it, the calmer you become, the easier it becomes, the easier it is to give better answers. I cannot repeat enough. You need to practice and you need to record yourself. I hate recording myself. Yes, I hate recording myself also, but it's necessary. You need to do it. Uh, do use a headset because um, if you use the computer microphone, you're going to get feedback loops. That happens all the time. You may, uh, you don't want that happening. It doesn't sound good. Do be in the rating room at least 10 minutes before the interview begins. Don't be late. Doesn't look good. Last but not least, now this is a webinar, so this doesn't apply to you guys, but if you're in an interview, never show a blank screen. Doesn't look good, doesn't look professional. They need to see your face. They're making judgments about your facial expression. If they can't see it, they are gonna judge you poorly. They're gonna judge you as not being trustworthy. They're gonna judge you as being nervous. If I, if I, When I interview people for jobs, if I don't see your face, I think you have something to hide. Quite simple. This might mean that you need to find a good place with good internet. That's an important thing. But last, turn your phone off. Don't, or turn it onto silent. Don't have notifications coming up like I did in the interview. So, upon that note, I think we're at an end. As the last part, we'll go through the basics. What should you focus on in an interview? W questions. When, where, what? How can you make your answer specific? By giving a real example. Again, focus on the when, the where, the what. How should you appear? You should appear safe to the, the boss. Don't scare the boss. And what is the boss scared of? The boss is scared of losing money. Tell them that you are a good investment. Tell them that they can trust you. Demonstrate that you will make them money because everybody loves money. Money, money, money. Yeah, you especially, Ninja Red. <laughs> you smiled on money very strongly there, can't say. At which point, let's finish up by saying thank you so much to HRDE, uh, HRD Bachot. Thank you so much, Ruth, for presenting this. Um, for notes on this lesson, we will be putting them up later on. You guys can ask for them in later sessions. Thank you so much. Um, next up, uh, I need to change the camera. Here we go. Who am I? Well, many of you guys are probably not aware uh, of me. Uh, I work for CCT. Uh, we're a new startup. We've been around as a group for about a year, but we only just registered about three months ago. So we're very new. Uh, we're very excited. We're thinking, we're, we're hoping to uh, disrupt the education industry. Um, just want to repeat to you guys, I'm not Ed Sheeran. You can tell it by looking at this photo and this photo. Um, as we can see by these two photos, Ed Sheeran, not Ed Sheeran. Not Jamie, Jamie. Anyway, good point to make. This joke doesn't work because I was supposed to be Ed Sheeran, but the group voted for not Chris Pratt and I couldn't change the PowerPoint. So, hey, that was fun. Anyway, moving on. You can find out uh, about us on CCT. Uh, we're on Instagram. Tip for everybody, if you need to remember important information, put it on a post-it note and put it on uh, the next to the camera. So guys, follow us at CCT Indonesia. Um, again, I have to repeat, we're very new. So uh, we're very excited to see you guys. Um, 
here's a picture of a couple of our events. Uh, here's um, Depica looking very uh, intellectual and giving important points. Here's Multi looking very sophisticated, graceful. Uh, you can tell she's a dancer. Here's me having fun. And uh, here's me looking contemplative. And here's me being pregnant. It, it was triplets, just to give you guys an idea. When we, when we discussed this joke beforehand, Multi said, don't do it, but I don't care. I'm going to do it. No repercussions, Jamie. There were, oh dear. Okay, never mind. Anyway, so here's a couple of our events. We were very happy to kind of see it. If you guys want to learn more about it, we're going to be having future events uh, like this. We really hope to do more of these with HRD uh, Bachot. Um, and thank you again so much for letting us do this. For further events, uh, you guys can screen cap here. We're going to put this information into the YouTube chat as well. So if you need to contact us, you can find us on Instagram at, at CT. CCT Indonesia, and you can contact us, contact us directly at contactus.cct.gmail.com. Uh, you can also contact Multi directly. Um, she does not respond well to private things, so please keep it professional. Um, and yeah, hopefully we can start to build on these by doing further sessions in the future. Um, just to give you guys an idea of our upcoming events, we've got some upcoming paid for sessions. These are priced differently depending on things. We're going to go on to developing specific answers in interview questions 102. We're also going to look a little more into psychology with understanding the boss and more into psychology about overcoming your fears of interviews because interviews are scary. They'll make your heart go boom, 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 boom. Just to warn you guys, uh, the space is limited. Uh, max 16 participants, we will do more of them, but we might not be able to do all of them for you within this month. So uh, if you contact us, we will try to find an allotted slot for you that can set in. We will be doing uh, free sets of these and then resetting them to a new set. So you, may, you probably won't get in this month, but hopefully we can get you guys in in the upcoming month. You can contact us to find out more about that. In other news, we have a free open workshop next Saturday at 7 p.m. This is with Simmer, who is a lovely speaker. She's going to talk about being healthy. Again, this is going to be in English. It's a great way for you guys to practice. It's free, open. The link to get in will be on our Instagram. And it's a great place to meet people, chat. You get a chance to practice English and maybe even learn a little. Uh, after Simmer, in an uh, October, we're going to be having a very exciting event with Kamun Kamara. Um, we're going to get Sandra uh, on. Some of you guys might know her if you're on the internet. They're part of the Kamun Kamara Urban Gardening. Um, it's very exciting. Uh, and she's uh, a very nice speaker. So we're going to have these two open events coming up. You can find out more again on our Instagram. The open workshops are open to anybody. But again, beyond a certain point, we cut off the thing. Uh, the link. So uh, you might not get into the first one. Please be aware. If we get more than 30 people, we have to shut it down because otherwise it doesn't work. And uh, upon that note, is there anything else that you uh, want to add, Ruth or Inta? No, I think it's been a really fun um, session also. I with you. So. We want to thank you. And then a lot of us are uh, also practicing. I think that everyone is getting a bit better, I hope, in terms of English, and then also gain more confidence um, uh -huh. in speaking English also. Thank you. Right. I, and thank you so much for providing this uh, source for people to talk. Because I think uh, HRD is is really important. It's important that we have an opportunity to talk about these things at work. Because it's not just... Uh, like educational stuff around work, it's the chance to talk about it, which mm -hmm. I think is why you guys are so important and so exciting. And uh, I can't wait to see what you guys are going to do in the future. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So uh, just uh, again, a last chance for people, uh, you can screen cap this, here's our contact details, but us, we're bigger now. Uh, again, you can go to our Instagram at CCT uh, Corporate Community Training online and upon that note guys shall we go on 
Welcome to the secret Q&A. This is for Zoom participants only. Intern, uh, Ruth, I think we're going to have to cut the feed now because we're going to be giving secret information.